I'm here today with Darren Poston, Application Specialist for PPG's Marketing Department, and we're going to talk about waterborne finishes in extreme temperatures and humidity. Welcome, Darren. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it very much. One of the questions we get at Collision Hub is applying waterborne materials in hot and humid conditions. What tips can you offer our viewers? So first we have tech bulletins available for extreme conditions, and then we also have uh, waterborne best practice videos um, that, that they can go out and look for. But um, how we define hot and humid is, I'm gonna say 100 degrees uh, plus uh, temperatures and then 50% 50, 50 relative humidity or more, of course. Okay. And the first thing we wanna make sure we do is apply less material. Th that's, the, that's the key thing. So a lot of different ways to achieve that. One is using a smaller fluid tip, okay. atomizing or turning the air pressure up a little bit more, gonna break that material up a little bit finer. And then of course, viscosity. And that's one of the main things that we always focus on. And we want that down in the 23 second range or the bottom of the actual viscosity range. We wanna make sure that we understand if we spray four coats, if it takes four coats in a, in a really hot and humid um, climate or extreme condition, that it's still probably just as fast as three normal coats. Okay. So we wanna put a thin coat down, flash it off fast and get out of the booth so we can move on to the next job. All right, so now we've covered humid conditions. What about the opposite? What about dry conditions? So we're gonna do um, the, the opposite of what we just okay. talked about, of course, but um, what we define as hot and dry is typically 100 degrees plus, yep. and anywhere from 30% or lower uh, in relative humidity. So okay. the, the basically, we're gonna put on more material, okay. and of course we can do that in a different way. We can actually go up in fluid tip size. We can turn our air pressure down to get a fatter, wetter droplet. And we wanna get the material to the panel. And that's the big thing. So if it's not applying correctly, if we can see that it looks dry, we wanna make sure that we're wetting that panel up. Um, and again, viscosity, we're doing opposite of what we were. We were just talked about, we're gonna have that be between 25 and 28 seconds or on the high end okay. of the viscosity range with the DIN4 viscosity cup. And then um, very easy to uh, get out of the booth. All right, so we've covered hot and humid, we've covered hot and dry. What about something in, in between? So we're gonna call that probably the sweet spot, anywhere from 80 degrees to 100 uh, temperature wise, and then uh, 30 to 50% relative humidity. Uh, things, are gonna, things are gonna spray fairly normal. They're gonna dry really fast. Your blends, um, control code, everything's gonna lay down really nice. So I would call that a sweet spot. And okay. they're gonna be able to, to get in and out of the booth very fast okay. uh, at, those, at those temperatures. Well, that's some great information. What other tips can you offer for applying waterborne materials in extreme conditions? I think one of the main things is we're very visual. So if we see something that's going down dry and it doesn't look like it's wetting up correctly, um, then we need, to, we need to make a change, right? So uh, very easy to do one or two things uh, to change that, you know, as far as, you know, your overlap, you know, tighten that up, get a little bit more material to the panel. Um, you know, turn your air pressure down. Those are some, some of the two of the easiest things that you can do. Okay. Um, but also remember the size of the job is gonna have a lot to do um, with what all you're gonna need to change. So you might not need to change very much of anything. It might just need um, just one or two things. So okay. that, that's, that's probably the main thing that I would, that I would wanna make sure we convey. Okay, and we probably wanna start slowly, one thing at a time. Absolutely, so <clears throat> don't change a bunch of stuff at, yeah. all at once, right? We wanna do one thing at a time and take it really slow and figure out what works best for you as an applicator. Okay, fantastic. Any other final tips in closing? Uh, yeah, so probably the big thing is whatever we change, whether it be viscosity, uh, application, or equipment, um, have a starting point or a reference point and jot that down to make sure we know where we started. So when things come back to normal, uh, it'll be easiest for us to, to transition back to a, a normal setting. So if I want more information on PPG waterborne refinish or other materials, where can I turn? PPGrefinish.com is gonna be the easiest way to find P-Sheets, reference anything product-wise, and then also visit our YouTube channel, and that is uh, PPG Refinish US and Canada. Awesome, well thanks, Darren, really appreciate it. Thank you.